no objection here. Posta will object, but if she does, we'll take that up at the time. With that, Ms. Kyler Green, would you please begin the announcement? Hey, Shana, good morning. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Uh, Richard Saldivar for the father, Jesse Moreno. Uh, judge, he should be on in the, uh, from the jail in about five to ten minutes. I'm ready. Mr. Garcia, if you, you announced, I don't know if anyone heard it. Okay. Uh, Mark Garcia for Belong, the permanency specialist assigned to the case. Anybody else who hasn't announced, go ahead. Carlos Piliado, Belong. Jennifer Harris, attorney and guardian ad litem for the children. Ms. Johnson, Monica go ahead. Johnson. Please. Yeah, Monica Johnson, mother of children. Genevieve. Um, Genevieve Moreno, Rosalie and Jackson's at. Can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Oof. Anybody else that hasn't announced yet? Hey, Judge, this is Jennifer Rodriguez, Permanent permanency supervisor for Belong. We're here today for a permanency review before final order. We were last here on October the 5th. I believe we have everyone we need now. All right, are the children still placed with a relative in Cameron County? Yes, Your Honor. All right, is there any Indian child heritage in this case? Say that one more time, Your Honor. Is there any Indian child heritage in this case? No, sir, there's not. No, Your Honor. All right, I don't know who's making all that noise, but I'm going to put everybody on mute just so I don't have any more distractions. All right, is that placement safe and appropriate meeting their needs? Yes, Your Honor. Is it in their best interest to remain there? Yes, Your Honor. Is it the least restrictive placement available? Yes, Your Honor. When was the last time you were able to visit the placement? I visited on December 13th. I dropped off uh, Christmas gifts to the to the children there. They were donated by uh, several different um, uh, welfare boards as well as um, other uh, donations given to the to belong. Great. Are they up to date on their medical, dental, and vision? Everything is up to date, Your Honor. Is either child receiving any psychotropics at this time? No, Your Honor. Is either child in therapy at this time? No, Your Honor. Are their educational needs being met? Yes, Your Honor, they are. Did Jax ever get the speech therapy? He did. Uh, he was reevaluated, and the evaluator stated that um, they were going to wait to see how well he did in school due to the fact that she thought that the socialization and him hearing other children would actually benefit him. And it actually has. So okay, I, I, I think we discussed this. I, I, I think I recall. Yes, the conversation. Okay. I just wanted yes, to make sure I had a note from that. Um, and for some reason, I. Yes, sure. I remember that now. Okay. Um, what's the permanency goal at this time? Right now, uh, based upon the information that I was given by Texas Tropical, um, Ms. Johnson's mental health recovery plan is going to take somewhere in the vicinity of 12 to 18 months to complete, as well as uh, a COPS-D, which is a, a co-depending uh, or co-diagnosis plan where she has a substance abuse attached to that, is also, also going to take about 8 to 12 months. So I got with my supervisor and did a uh, or completed a re, a re unification assessment, and there is a permanency goal suggested, but I need time to um, submit all of that up the uh, chain of command so that that way I can get a good handle on what goal we're going to follow, whether it be uh, a PMC or some other avenue. Your Honor, what was the the permanency goal last time we were here? Um, Reunification. And so at this point in time, you're stating that Belong's position is that the permanency goal may be changing? Yes, sir, that's correct. 
but at this time belong can't commit to one until you have completely gone up the chain of command with the recommendations that you have after the planning meeting yes your honor we uh we still need to uh solidify what position we're going to take um within the permanency goal okay um are the children having contact with Ms. Johnson at this time? Yes, regularly scheduled contact is being adhered to. Is she making all of her visits? Yes, she is. Are they appropriate? Yes, they are. Are you asking for any changes to the visitation schedule? N not at this time, Your Honor. Um, the children are seen uh, Monica on a weekly basis and um, th they are also attending uh, she is also attending children's events school events uh, along with the paternal side of the family as well may I speak please no ma'am we're, we're going through the questioning um all right. At this time, would you classify Ms. Johnson as being in compliance or not in compliance? She's in compliance as much as she can be. Yes, Your Honor. What is she not able to be compliant with? The mental health recovery plan, as well as the COPS D plan. Those plans are extended plans by her recommending psychiatrist, and those are going to take more time to complete more time than the than the case has before we dismiss is she participating in both of those things she is is she participating to the best of her ability she is are you getting feedback from the providers as to her participation i did get feedback yes your honor and is the feedback that she's engaged she is engaged it's just going to take longer Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. We're looking at a minimum of 12 to 18 months, and that was as of October 3rd, 2023. Is Mr. Moreno able to comply with any portion of his plan? I went to Mr. Moreno on August on October 12th to uh, re do the uh, uh, Family strength and needs assessment, again, as requested by his attorney, and to complete another family plan of service. Those were completed, and Mr. Moreno uh, refused to sign or participate. His comments throughout the family, uh, family strength and needs assessment were Monica takes care of the children and, or Monica takes care of that aspect. Um, but he does, uh, it's my understanding that he does communicate with the children uh, via telephone. Um, but he has refused to participate and there aren't any classes for him to take at Cameron County detention facility that would, um, that would meet any of the family plan of service, uh, requirements if I issued them anyway. As of today, is it safe to return the children to either parent? No. As of today, has either parent fully addressed the concerns that brought the children into the care of Belong? No. Do you believe it's in the best interest for the children to remain in the temporary managing conservatorship of the Department of Belong? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Do you believe that Belong has made all reasonable efforts to achieve the permanency goal? Yes, Your Honor. Anything specific that you want to point out? Other than um, Monica's work on her recovery plan has been noted, uh, it's just going to take more time than this case uh, is going to is going to need, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Kyler Green, any questions for Mr. Garcia? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, is is housing uh, additionally a concern for Ms. Johnson? It is right now. She does not have permanent housing, which she could. Uh, provide safe a safe environment for the children 
And is that a concern for the permanency goal as well for the children? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and what about employment? Has that been, a, an, a, a, I suppose, an ongoing issue throughout this case as well? It has. She currently is a bartender um, and her uh, difficulties with employment is that she doesn't, she lacks transportation. And so she, uh, she has a great difficulty retaining and maintaining employment due to that factor. Um, you spoke before about um, staffing this case for a, a different permanency goal. Um, will you also be, or do you think it would be prudent to include any sort of adoption specialists um, with belong that can assist in ensuring that the children um, can receive any and all benefits that would be available to them if this case were to change permanency goals? Yes, I do. Okay. And why do you think that that would be important for the children and for the parents to know that? Most important for the children is that they they would have added benefits if they were adopted. Um, <clears throat> right now, the different avenues of uh, permanency goals that we have are PMC in this case, as well as adoption. Um, but that's going to require a more in-depth um, evaluation with the, with the supervisor present, as well as uh, the regional director. That's why I am, I'm going to be requesting a, a a family group conference and inviting everybody to those things so that that way we can get the, we can get this right the first time. Do you think mediation would also be appropriate in this case? I think so. Okay. Um, in regards to the reasonable efforts that you had discussed with the judge, um, specifically with the father, what, what sort of reasonable efforts do you think you've done in order to get him to participate? I made arrangements to see uh, Mr. Moreno on July 11th uh, to, to complete the, the, initial fam uh, family strength and needs assessment, as well as a family plan of service. Um, his attorney, it, at that time, he refused to, to uh, sign anything or participate. His attorney later uh, brought up in a, a previous hearing, asked me to go back and had made arrangements for Mr. Moreno to, um, to participate, in which he, he did participate in completing the, the assessment. We just, um, with respect to the, fam the family plan of service, he, uh, he again refused to sign um, or acknowledge that he, he would participate. Okay. Um, and you, you stated before that there's um, contact with both the mother and with paternal relatives with the children? Yes, there is. And um, do you think that that contact is expected to continue? Yes, it is. And is it in the children's best interest for that contact to continue? It is in the children's best interest and, and most encouraged. These children need as much family as possible around to complete a permanency goal for them. Okay. And in regards to the paternal relatives, are they also able to assist with transportation for the children's extracurricular activities that were ordered by the court? Yes, they have limited transportation as well, but two, pe two families with limited transportation is better than one family with limited transportation. Uh, okay. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. The course, then. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, you said that the mother is in compliance, correct? Yes. Okay. And with regard to the treatment that she is currently undertaking, it's possible for her to complete that in 12 months. Is that correct? Uh, yes. The okay. mental health work. All right. And it's not uncommon for parents to continue addressing mental health while still being reunified with their children, correct? Um. I'm not sure, but I, I would assume that to be correct. Okay. And so given the fact that this mother is in compliance, she has good positive visits with her children and she has family support. Do you think that it would be appropriate to potentially give her more time to complete her services so that reunification can remain the goal? Uh, she So far she's had, uh, what are we looking at? Eight, eight, six, seven months to, to, uh, to address this goal. I'm not sure, like I said, based upon the information I was given by her, her chosen provider, mental health provider on October 3rd, this, this mental health goal alone is going to be a minimum of 12 to 18 months. That's not including the cops. D. Your Honor, I'm going to object to non-responsive. He's not answering the question I asked. Ask your question again, Mr. Golston. Okay. Mr. Garcia, given the fact that Ms. Johnson is in compliance, do you think that it would be fair to give her more time to complete her services so that reunification can remain the goal? 
Your Honor, I'm going to object to just lack of notice on this. It's would appear that Mr. Costa is asking for an extension in this case and nothing's been filed. Your Honor, I haven't filed a motion, but I will. I'm just asking the caseworker a question. I think for the purposes of permanency goal at a permanency hearing, it's within the scope. So I'm going to overrule the objection to relevance, I think is what you were, were making or, or notice uh, and allow her to question Mr. Garcia regarding the issue of the permanency goal um, at this time and the issue of how much time she would need, understanding that we're not having a hearing on an extension at this point in time. So I won't be requesting or sorry, uh, granting any relief on that today. So Mr. Costa, you can explore it a little bit more, but let's move on. Yes, Judge. Then my answer to that is no. Isn't it true that at the beginning of this case, Ms. Johnson was meeting barriers with getting in touch with providers because of the location of the providers? No, she got in, in contact with providers, Texas Tropical. She was having, we were having issues with Texas Tropical giving me that information. Okay. So you're saying that there were no issues at the beginning of this case with department providers in the area where the children and where Ms. Johnson was getting in touch with Ms. Johnson or even getting in touch with you? No, I'm saying that the information that Texas Tropical was uh, the provider, her chosen mental health provider was having trouble getting that information to me. Okay. Given the fact that Ms. Johnson is in substantial compliance with her service plan and the visits with the children are going well, do you think that it would be fair to the children and to Ms. Johnson to increase those visits? if possible. Yes, that would be fair. All right, and what kind of increase in visits are you envisioning? I'm not, you just brought it up. Okay, so since you're saying that it's fair to increase visits, how can those visits be increased? I would have to get with my supervisor and we would have to staff that. Okay, uh -huh. do you think that it would be good to have a staffing regarding increasing visits? Yes, uh, definitely. We'll, we'll have a staffing to include that as well. All right. And will you include the attorneys in that staffing? I will include you in uh, all the attorneys in the family group conference. All right. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Judge. Mr. Saldivar. Uh, yes, just a couple questions. So as far as Mr. Moreno, what are you asking him to complete in services? Nothing. Okay. Uh, but is there a family plan of service on file with the court? There is the initial family plan of service, which he refused to sign. And then um, last permanency hearing, uh, I was asked to, to complete another, which again, he refused to sign. I did not submit that one for e-filing. I did not see the, the need to, um, to submit another family plan of service. It just kind of. Okay. Like the, orig the original service plan, what, what was the department asking for or belong asking for Mr. Moreno to complete? Uh, mental health service, a mental health evaluation and the recommendations from that psychiatrist to be followed as well a um, anger management course, a parenting course, and also the uh, a batter in intervention prevention program, uh, BIPT uh, classes were to be taken as well. Which okay. is a and it's violence. I apologize, that, that's a family violence course. Okay, and as far as uh, the, the jail, none of those services are available to him at this point, is that correct? That's correct. Due to his incarceration, okay. the, the detention facility does not provide any of those services. Okay. Are there any virtual services that he can complete that the jail might be able to set that up for him? They, uh, I got with Lieutenant Rafael Lucio about that, and he said that right now they don't have the means to do that. Okay. As far as, do you know uh, when he might be released from the Cameron County Jail? I have not been given any of the information on that. Okay. <clears throat> and as far as, uh, you said that he was uh, speaking with the children, you know how those visits are going? No, I was just informed that he calls periodically uh, from time to time to speak with the children. Okay. Have the children voiced any concerns to you uh, when Mr. Moreno calls? No, they have not. Okay. Pass the witness, Thank you. Ms. Harris. Ms. Johnson's service plan includes random drug screenings, correct? It does. Has she been completing those? I have not submitted. 
I, I have not. So the, I have not found a resource in order to submit those down to there. I need to get with Texas Tropical to see which provider they use, and I have not been able to do that yet. No. Okay. Consider random. Considering that random drug screenings are part of the service plan and drug use was an initial concern in this case, don't you think it's important for those to be completed? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And has she completed the domestic violence class that was on her service plan? No, she has not. Is she engaging in the individual counseling? Not right now. So your testimony to the court is that she's in compliance, even though she hasn't done drug screening, she hasn't done domestic violence classes, she's not in individual counseling, but she has recently started a mental health assessment or a mental health treatment plan. I was asked if she was in compliance with her mental health counseling and recovery plan. And yes, she is. She is not in compliance with the, the things that you have asked me about, Miss Counselor. Okay. And is placement receiving, or, or I'm sorry, let me go back. Where Where is Miss Johnson living right now? Miss Johnson, I she was living with some friends is all I have. Okay. So has she been able to maintain say, stable in, uh, housing during this case? No. That's also part of her service plan, correct? Yes, that's correct. Can the department, or I'm sorry, can Belong even begin to consider keeping reunification and a possible extension in the case when she doesn't even have some place to live with the kids? No, that's the reason I was reconvening for a staffing on the reunification assessment, the permanency okay. grant. Or one and of has has Miss Johnson been um, contributed contributing either financially or in kind for the children that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Um, is placement receiving kinship uh, funds? Yes, they are at this time. Does placement need those funds to help take care of the children? Absolutely. And is Ms. Johnson in a position where she would be able to assist placement if those funds were gone and this case and this case ended in a permanent managing managing conservatorship? No, she would not have the means to do so. Although she's not in compliance and Mr. Moreno is not engaging in services, do you feel like this family is working like a family should work in supporting the children? They're working to the best of their ability at this point. Okay. What what would be your con any concerns you have in how, how they're doing things now? Uh, uh, neither parent is able to provide a safe or stable environment for the children. Neither parent has the means to provide financially for the children. Neither parent has completed all the services that are required uh, to assist in uh, helping the children. And neither parent is, un is in, in, has the ability to demonstrate any skill at this point that would assist in, in providing a safe and stable environment for the children. And despite that, the children still enjoy engaging in contact with their parents, correct? Absolutely. And their extended family? Absolutely. And, um, and it's encouraged as well that they, they interact with their extended family as well. Okay. And between placement and extended family, they're, they're, they're able to meet the children's needs? Yes, they are at this time. No further questions, Judge. Any follow-up? Excuse me, this is uh, DC1. Uh, I have spoken to uh, our clergy here, and he was going to try to provide uh, anger management and parenting classes to Mr. Moreno. Okay, hey, hang on just a second, sir. Could you come on camera, please? Sure. Okay, could you state your name for me? Uh, Sergeant Rafael Lucio. Would you please raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. All right. Could you repeat what you just said for the record, please? That I spoke with our clergy, the clergy that we have here. He was going to uh, provide um, anger management and uh, parenting classes to Mr. Moreno. He was okay. going to get back with me uh, sometime this year. 
Okay. Well, thank you, sir, for that information. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. And your honor, hey. I had a couple more quest follow up questions for Mr. Garcia briefly. Go ahead. We're running eight minutes over, so if you could make it quick. Mr. Garcia, have the referrals been sent out for individual counseling and domestic violence for Ms. Johnson? Yes, to Texas Tropical. So she is to engage in individual counseling and domestic violence at Texas Tropical? Yes, they provide those services there. And she's in contact with Texas Tropical right now, correct? That's correct. So are those services going to be incorporated into her mental health? Yes, they are. Okay, so those services, it's not that she's not doing them, it's that they're being incorporated into her mental health sessions that she's currently engaged in. Is that correct? That's my understanding. That's the reason, it, that's one of the reasons it's going to take eight, out to 18 months for her to complete that recovery plan. So it's not that she's not engaged, it's that she's engaged with Texas Tropical and they're addressing everything with her mental health, including individual counseling and domestic violence. In time, they will have addressed everything. Okay, thank you. Anything further? No, you're uh, Ms. Harris? Uh, your Honor, I, I appreciate that this family is working how we would want a family to work. The kids are having contact with the parents that they love and, and want to have contact with. It's in a safe, protective way. They're in a stable, safe, supportive home where they're getting what they need. They've got contact with extended family. But I think at this point in the case, we, we, we need to face the fact neither parent is in compliance. Neither one of them is in a place where they can provide a safe, stable, drug and violence free home for their children. And neither one of them has proceeded far enough in their services to do that. I would argue that the goal needs to be relative adoption at this point because neither parent is in compliance and neither parent is in a position to help assist financially if this were a permanent managing conservatorship kind of situation. I think we definitely need to have mediation on that. I think group conferences are great on that. I appreciate that Ms. Johnson is working on getting herself in a better place, but it's obviously going to take much longer than this case can allow, and we have to put the children first. That's that's required, and I hope that parents will think of that and Belong will think of that when, when ultimately staffing and deciding on a resolution to this case. Other than that, the kids are doing great. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Your Honor, may I address the court briefly? Yes. Your Honor, I would ask that the permanency goal remain formal reunification. Ms. Johnson is substantially engaged in her services. The drug test issue is that she hasn't been sent for one. So that's not on her, that's on Belong. Um, with regard to her mental health, they're addressing individual counseling and domestic violence through the mental health provider that she is attending right now. I understand the timeframes aren't ideal, but there are ways to remedy that in a manner to where these children won't have their, to where the parents won't have their parental rights terminated and where the children will still be able to maintain contact with their parents. I don't, I don't think at this time that it's um, appropriate to say that adoption is the goal, especially when you have a parent who's complying with what she's been asked to do. And I mean, financial issues is really what the main issue is right now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. For the purposes of the permits to review before final order, the court finds there's no Indian child heritage in this case. Court finds that as of the last hearing in October, the permanency goal had been family reunification. At this time, the court makes a finding that Belong and the department are in the process of considering what their goals should be. Um, and, uh, you know, based on what I'm hearing today, reunification at this time is not in the best interest of the children. However, Mr. Garcia testified that they needed to have some staffings and have some discussions. And I think that the best finding I can make at this time is that it's not safe to return the children to either parent at this time. It would not be in the best interest of the children to return the parents. And the parents haven't fully addressed the concerns that brought the children into the care of the department at this point in the case. Um, as far as the permanency goal, you know, it's something that belong in the department need to figure out. Um, 
as Mr. Garcia put it, they need to solidify their position. Um, I'll find that the children are still in a safe, appropriate placement. It's meeting their needs. And it's in their best interest to remain there. And then this is the least restrictive placement available. I find that Mr. Garcia last visited the placement on December the 13th, 2023 in person. Court finds the children are up to date on their medical dental vision. They're not receiving any psychotropic medications. Neither child is participating in any therapy and that their educational needs are being met. Court finds that the visitations that are occurring right now are appropriate and it's in their best interest for the visitations to continue at this time. Court didn't hear any evidence that the visitations were bad for the children in any way, so we're going to allow that to continue to happen. Um, I'm going to find that Mr. Moreno is not in compliance. Maybe if he can get involved in those classes or those services that um, the officer testified to, he can get some things done, but obviously the incarceration is putting quite a restriction on what he's able to do, so he's not in compliance. I'm going to find that mom is in minimal compliance. Um, she's doing some things, but I'm going to make a finding as well that she doesn't have the stability right now to take these children on. She's participating in some services and she's getting some help with these programs, but I heard a lot of evidence today that there's neither parent has the stability to provide a home for these children at this time. And we're almost to the end of the case. So that is important. Um, court finds that Mr. Moreno refused to, to sign his family plan of service on Mr. Garcia's court order visit. <clears throat> court finds that Belong has made reasonable efforts to achieve the permanency goal, including working with the parents and visiting them in person, maintaining and visiting the placement, maintaining contact with and visiting the placement, working with the parents and evaluating their progress on plans, and uh, working with the family in general to address the concerns. I'm going to order the parties to a mediation to take place in late February. So the second half, latter part of February. There's no point in mediating this this month. Um, we need to give the party some time to work on things a little bit. And then uh, the first half of February as well, there's a trial date's not until March the 7th. So I want you all to go to mediation in the latter part of February and be prepared to come back on March the 7th, um, one way or the other. Here so on. that March the 7th trial date is, uh, or trial time is 10 a.m. Yes, Ms. Costa. Honor, can I request the de-identified file be provided? Uh, has it not been provided yet, Ms. Kyler Green? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Well, then the court will order that the department shall provide the de-identified file to all the parties in this case. Uh, as soon as possible. All right. I have to admonish the parents, the state of Texas good parents in CPS cases 12 months to demonstrate they can provide a safe, stable, violence, and drug-free home for their children. In the event that you cannot do that, your rights to your children are subject to restriction and or termination. 12 months is going to be up um, in April, I think, or maybe the end of March. I'm sorry, no, it's May. May 20th, 2024 is the earliest dismissal date. So there's still time, but you're running out of time. Anything I failed to address, Ms. Collar Green? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. I am way over budget on time, so thank you all for your time and your service. If nothing further, all parties. With that, Ms. Collar Green, would you please begin the announcements? Yes. Good morning. I'm Emily Collar Green, attorney for the department. Vanessa De Los Santos, permanency specialist with Belong. Christy Knopp, permanency supervisor with Belong. Jennifer Harris, attorney and guardian ad litem for the children. Okay, looking at this, we're here for a permanency review of the final order. It's actually extended policy peer review and progress report for Jesus. Um, 18 at this time, is basic level, 
independent living as a permanency goal been there since May. Is that still the case? Um, has Seuss left care on December 28th. What were the circumstances surrounding his departure? He said he felt that it was time for him to go and um, he was moving with a friend to San Antonio. Did you communicate to him the ramifications of him leaving care? Yes, I did. Did you communicate to him the opportunities and the services and resources that would not be available to him if he left care? Yes, I did. Do you believe that he understood for his age what he was doing? I do believe he understood. You believe he made the decision to leave voluntarily? Yes. And you made every effort to um, make sure he understood the benefits of staying? Yes, I did. What does Belong in the department want to do now as far as his sis is concerned? Um, we will uh, put him on the trial independence period. And you got that date is December the 28th? Yes. Okay. Before he left, everything else from what your report said seemed that he was doing well and up to date on everything and had everything he needed. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And he had told you that he would... Um, be, when did when did you find out that he was actually going to leave? So he told me, I want to say it was like a few days before the 27th, because I went to visit him on the 27th, December 27th. And then he stated that he was going to be leaving on December 28th, which was the next day. This was like a few days before the 27th. I would yeah. say like a Probably week. Green, do you have any questions for Ms. De Los Santos? In regards to Jesus, your honor, or Jolina? Let's just stay on Jesus for now. Um, no, I don't. Miss Harris? No, Your Honor. All right, now let's flip over to Delina. Delina, at this time, 17. She's also in a TLP placement in Fort Bend. Is she still there? Yes, she is. All right. At this point in time, is that placement safe and appropriate meeting your needs? Yes, it is. Is it the least restrictive placement available? Yes. Is it in her best interest to remain there at this time? Yes, it is. Has she had the opportunity to express her wants and desires as the placement with you? Yes, she has. And have you visited her at the placement? Yes, I have. And have any other family members come forward since our last hearing to offer placement for Jelena? No. All right. She's up to date on everything. She is. She refused a dental back in December, early December and was scheduled for another one on the 26th. I have not received confirmation if she went on the 26th or not. Okay. I saw that note. I just didn't know if you knew she went on the 26th or not. Okay. Let's just follow up on that then. Um, she's got that weekly therapy going. Does that seem to be working? How are her behavior? Yes, it does. Um, she she does engage in therapy, which is really well. Um, and then she's also attending the substance abuse counseling um, okay. because of that those behaviors with the debate. Does she report to you that the therapy is something that she wants to go to? Yeah, she actually does um, talk about like how she likes ther the therapist there. Okay. <clears throat> and her psychotropic review, is it up to date? Yes, it is. It was just on the anxiety, depression, mood, medication? Yes. Okay. Um, she's still taking the, the sleep meds too, though? Um, the sleep meds? She's got something too, yes. too that she's taken for insomnia. Yes. Okay. All right. What about her skipping school? She wants to just do her work and leave. Um, that's kind. That's her issue right now is that she feels like when she finishes her work, she should be able to go. She shouldn't have to stay throughout the entire day. Um, I know placement was working with her counselor to get her in the 1621 program, which is an alternative program where it's, it's like a flexible setting. I guess kind of like a credit recovery 
Um, it's, so it's just, it's, she's finishing her work. She can go. And um, I know she gets to be employed as well with that. Um, when I spoke with them yesterday, they stated there was a little hiccup in a test in one of her, I think like one of her star testing that they're going to have to look at to see if she will qualify for the 1621 program. Okay. Anything else that we need to discuss as far as Jelena's concern? No. Uh, I don't know if I asked you if her, her placement is safe and appropriate, meeting her needs and in her best interest to continue. Yes, it is. And it's the least restrictive placement available? Yes, it is. Do you believe that, I know prior to um, Jesus leaving Karen, then up to now with Selena, do you believe that Belong has made all necessary reasonable efforts to achieve both permanency goals? Yes, I do. Anything in specific that you want to state on the record? No. Was that a no? No, no, sir. Ms. Kyler Green, questions for Ms. De Los Santos? Uh, yes, Your Honor, thank you. What, what efforts have you made to ensure that Jelena has um, all requisite knowledge that that I don't know we can give her uh, to be prepared for turning eighteen. She does have her legal document, um, her legal documents such as her birth certificate, social security card. She has an ID. Um, she, which she could would benefit with her with her getting employed. Um, she also has completed her PAL classes, and I know that we have discussed um, driver's ed for her. The program that you're talking about with her school, is that to get a GED? No, it's it's uh, to earn her diploma. Okay. Is she also interested in getting her GED? She has um, brought it up that she feels that maybe just getting her GED would be easier because she doesn't want to attend school all day long. What's a priority for, for you? For her to earn her, her diploma. One, one way or the other? Yes. Okay. Um, is she still in contact with Jesus? They do stay in contact, yes, through text message and phone calls. Okay. When is her birthday? Her birthday is October. Okay. So she has another year potentially in care. Yes. And we'll, when does she graduate? That I I don't know. Is she a junior right now or a senior right a now? Junior. Okay. Classified as a junior. Okay. Is there any chance that she will um, be able to graduate before she turns 18? That is depending on the program. If she can get into the program, I know it's, she would be able to graduate earlier than next year. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further on Ms. Harris. Did Jelena lose credits last semester from skipping classes? Not that I'm aware of. I, I don't. So she, she was able to complete everything and get her credits? Yes, because I know she is classified as, an, as a junior. Okay. Is there any potential problems with her continuing to skip class regarding um, juvenile problems or place? placement problems not placement problems i think it's just her wanting to to just leave when she's done okay and this has been an ongoing thing correct correct even at her last placement yes and you've talked to her about it correct yes i have and a therapist has talked to her about it yes and I've talked to her about it, so we're, we're not really making progress on it, are we? No. So it's important that we find some kind of alternative to make sure she ends up with her, her diploma or her GED. Yes. No further questions, Judge. Anything else from the department or below? No, sir. Ms. Harris? Um, I, I don't lot, have a lot on Jesus. He, he hasn't wanted to meet with me or talk to me for quite some time, um, but he's a smart boy. He can take care of himself. Uh, he, he gave it a shot where he was at, I think a wholehearted shot at this. And, and I think he put that into what he was doing, knowing him. And so I support his trial independence if that's what he wants to do. Jelena is, it's a little frustrating. Um, you know, she, she really ha was expressing all these hopes and dreams and, and really seemed to be on track. And then all of a sudden, um, problems with, with marijuana and, um, and going to school and it, it, it's 
not that I think the marijuana usage was a problem. It was more about following rules where she's at. She's just not wanting to follow rules, wanting to express her independence. Feels like she's old enough to be able to make choices and do what she wants. And I think her not going to class and, and not following rules at placement um, is just her way of expressing herself. I don't know that there's much we can do about it. I think that her her diploma or her GED needs to be our number one goal at this point because she has expressed an interest in going to college in the future. Um, whether she still wants to do that or not, I think having her diploma or her GED will leave that option there for her in the future should she change her mind and decide to go back on that course. It sounds I would like ask her, I would ask for permission to travel to see her, Your Honor. Granted. It sounds like Jelena has a serious case of being afflicted with teenagism. Um, I think that, I mean, if it, if it makes a difference for me to talk to her, I will. I mean, sometimes that actually has the adverse effect, but um, everything's considered and what they've been through. I'm not surprised, but I do want to stay on top of it. So um, I think. I'm going to order the one as far as Jelena is concerned to just continue to focus on getting her to that next step in life with either a diploma or a GED. I, I don't think, and I agree with Ms. Harris, uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating to see the negative downturn happen like that right in front of our eyes. But unfortunately, we see it more often than we want. I want her to know that we're all here no matter what she does. And, and hey, Sus, too, we're, we're here to provide uh, a place for them to have resources, regardless of what they do or how they perform. But I would like for her to also understand that this is a crucial point in her life where she has the opportunity to take advantage of this stuff and give herself a leg up. Um, but if she's not going to do it, the very minimum we need to do is make sure she gets a GED. So I'm going to order that on the educational part of it. Court finds that Jesus left care December 28th, 2023, um, and that prior to leaving care, Ms. De Los Santos made reasonable efforts and made sure that Jesus had all the necessary information and was making an informed decision on leaving care. Um, court will order that his trial and independence period begin as of December 28th, 2023. Court finds that Belong has made reasonable efforts to achieve the permanency goals. Um, it was permanent uh, independent living for both children. Now it's just independent living for Jelena. Court finds that prior to leaving care, everything was up to date for Jesus. Um, and he was in good health. Court finds that Jelena's checkups are all up to date. Her educational needs are being met, provided we continue to focus on the issues that she's having. Um, the, the school skipping, the marijuana use, whatever it is that's causing her to fall behind, we need to just stay on top of it. I don't think that we're going to make her stop, but who knows? Um, I'll find that her placement is safe and appropriate, meeting her needs and in her best interest to continue. It's the least restrictive placement available. And I'll find that Belong and the department have made reasonable efforts to achieve the permanency goals specifically by maintaining contacts with both Jelena and Jesus, providing them with resources and guidance on their services and um, assisting them with whatever it was they need, needed at any particular point in time. But main main thing I want to do now is um, get Jelena out of high school. Our next hearing is going to be June 6th, 2024. June 6, 2024, and that's going to be at 10 a.m. Here's what I would like to know on June 6, 2024. Here's a goal, and I know a lot of it's up to Jelena, but I'd like to know that she completed her junior year and got all her credits when we come back June 6. So if we need to have a staffing between now and then, please do so. I'm not going to order one. Sounds like y'all are all working together. But if you need court intervention bef before that time, just let me screen you know. We'll get something on the docket. Anything I failed to address? Not for me, Judge. No, no Your Honor. Oh. Thank you. All right. 
Thank you all for your time and your service. If nothing further, all parties are excused. No objection. No objection. Thank you. Thank you. No objection. Would, you, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, good morning. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Sherry Bryce Dye, attorney for Elaine DeLeon. Richard Sutherland for Aaron Davila, Judge Ready. Jennifer Harris, attorney for respondent mother, Shannon Cannon. She is not present, but I am authorized to proceed on her behalf, Your Honor. Kathleen Savage, attorney ad litem for the children. I am ready, Your Honor. Christy Cannot, pharmacy supervisor with Belong Observing. Catherine Schill, pharmacy specialist with Belong Observing. Laura, pharmacy specialist for the kids. Supervisor with Belong. Joe Roden, Tri County Casa. Ms. De Leon. Uh, Irene De Leon, grandmother. We're here for final trial. Um, Ms. Kyla Green, my notes reflect that we've got relinquishments from both parents. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we do. There was a mediated settlement agreement in this case that required uh, affidavits of relinquishments to be signed and filed, and they have uh, been done so by both parents. All right. Um, as far as housekeeping goes, did you want to get your exhibits proved up first or did you all have something else in mind? No, I, I, I would, John. And I apologize in advance because they're going to be a little bit um, out of order just based on the fact that we have relinquishments. I'm going to I'm going to jump around in terms of numbering, but I imagine Ms. Greenwald can keep up with um, where I'm going. All right. You may proceed. Um, and these these exhibits, Your Honor, they have been presented, uh, or excuse me, they've been sent out to the parties before. I, I don't believe there's any objections, and I can uh, run through them. Uh, they're all certified copies, um, and without objection, I'll after I go through them, I'll request that they all be admitted at the same time. Okay, Ms. Barr, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Um, what's your role in this case? I am the permit specialist. In this okay, case. Were you um were you present for the mediation that occurred in this case on November third? Yes, ma'am, I was. Okay, and were both parents present? Yes, ma'am, they were. Okay, and was there discussion at this MSA or excuse me at this mediation for um, relinquishments to be signed by both parents? Yes, ma'am. And um at the time that this mediation occurred, um had the parents uh, been involved in this case? The mother was yes, um, the father was very minimal. Okay, um had there been a communication with you? With the mother, yes, with the father, very minimal. Okay. Did they, um, at this mediation, uh, were there attorneys present? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? At this mediation, were there attorneys present? Yes, they were. Okay. And what were the, um, what was the agreement for the parents in regards to relinquishments at this mediation? I'm sorry, I, I you broke up and hear that question. What were the... What was the uh, what was the agreements in regards to relinquishments that the parents that the parents agreed to at this mediation? Um, they would uh, voluntarily relinquish parental rights um, before a certain date. If they did not relinquish those or um, complete the documents before that date, um, they would agree to have their parental rights terminated at trial. Um, Dad asked pictures. Belong did send those pictures to Dad as part of the event. Okay. And so have you reviewed this? Uh, have you reviewed this mediated settlement agreement? <clears throat> yes, ma'am, I have. Okay. So in regards to the relinquishments that are mentioned in Section 1, Section 2, and Section 3, um, were those tendered? I'm sorry, I lost you again. Can you repeat that? Your Honor, is it me or is it is it Missy Barra's connection? Can you tell? I think it's probably more on her end because I'm hearing everything you say. Okay. Um, Can you ask her to turn her video off, maybe? Yeah, let's try turning your video off, Missy Bada, and maybe that'll help us out with that audio. Okay. Um, were the relinquishments that were agreed to be um, filled out by the parents, were those submitted? Yes. Okay. They were. And um, were you able to discuss with the parents ahead of time uh, the understanding of what a relinquishment means? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, were you also able to provide the photos to the father? I'm and my, I think my internet's really bad. Okay. Will you, can you hear me now? And your honor, I have no objection to the MSA. I don't know about anybody else, but I have no problem with Ms. Kyler Green reading the relevant portions into the record. 
Okay. No objection. Okay, I can do that, Your Honor. All right, having heard no objections, the court will admit petitioners one, two, three, seven, eight, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And I believe that the court heard enough testimony up to that point from Ms. Ibarra regarding the MSA. Did anybody else want to put on any other testimony or raise any other concerns about the MSA? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. The court will adopt the MSA of the parties. And with that, Ms. Carla Green, you can move forward um, with anything else that you may have left. Well, Your Honor, I'd, I'd, I'd like to to put in some evidence in regards to the um, affidavits of relinquishment, but I don't know if Ms. Um, Ibarra has called in yet. I, I sent her a text, asked her to. I could probably have Ms. Cannot testify to that if need be. All right, go ahead, Ms. Carla Green. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Ibarra, so um, we, did you have an opportunity to discuss with the mother and the father about um, relinquishing their parental rights to the children? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, do they... Um, Throughout this case and and at the at the discussions that you had in regards to those relinquishments, did they indicate an understanding as to what that meant? Yes, they under they stated they understood what it meant. And this is in regards to both the criminal case that had um that has resulted um in regards to this case as well as um their services and the, their status in this case. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, did they indicate an understanding as to how this would be in the best interest of the children to attend to these relinquishments? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, and where are the children currently living? They're placed with their maternal grandmother, Miss Elaine de Leon. And is that who they've been with throughout the course of this case? Uh, they were placed in a foster home at the beginning of the case. Um, they were placed with the grandmother on August 3rd of 2023. And is that, uh, for all intents and purposes, likely going to be their permanent um, placement? Yes, it will be. Okay. Is it in the best interest of the children from your perspective as the caseworker on this case for these relinquishments to be accepted uh, by the court? Yes, ma'am. Did the parents have any concern or misunderstanding as to what this meant in regards to their rights? No, they did not. Do you feel like they were forced or co coerced in any way by you? No. They no. And uh, is it your understanding that they both have had contact with their attorneys throughout the course of this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and... Did Belong, I understand your signature is not on that as a as an acceptance, but does Belong accept these relinquishments in regards to the MSA that was um, created? Yes, Belong does. Okay. And is it your perspective that these should be accepted by the court and that the parental rights of the children, excuse me, of the parents for the children should be terminated based on this relinquishment, these relinquishment grounds only? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else that you want to present, Ms. Carla Green? Actually, Your Honor, I do have some something related to that to ask uh, if I may. Go ahead. Um, ma'am, have you been uh, to the home of Ms. Stelion? Yes, ma'am, I have. And everything is appropriate uh, for the children in your assessment, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you aware of harassing contact from either of the parents to Ms. Stelion? I know that um, Mr. Davila had tried to contact Ms. Delion uh, via email, I believe. Um, we did talk about it and I did let her know that um, she did not have to communicate with him and that if he needed any communication uh, with Ms. Delion that he can contact me and he has not contacted me. Do you think it would be helpful for the court to put a no contact order in place to prevent Ms. Dav uh, Ms. Delion from having to seek other legal interventions and costs in the future? Yes, ma'am. Um, there is no reason legally for her to need to contact with uh, either the mother or the father if she chooses not to, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Judge, I don't object. There's pass. no motion. There's no motion on file for this. What, what specifically are you seeking at this time, Miss Dai? Your Honor, um, finances are always an issue for everyone, but I don't want my client to have to seek legal intervention in the future to prevent any sort of contact. These folks know her address. They know her phone number. They know how to contact her. And I'm seeking that there be an order preventing contact that she can, you know, utilize if need be because their rights are terminated or will be terminated. And there's no reason for them to be reaching out to her at any time. Um, and so if she needs to get a hold of them for any reason, I'm sure she would be able to do that. But um, I want to prevent her from having stress and undue burden of harassment. 
And, Your Honor, I, I, I would argue that there is not a motion for that. There, it was not included in the MSA. Had they wanted that to be a part of it, they could have included it. My client has criminal restrictions regarding contact with the children, so the children are perfectly safe. This case isn't about the grandmother. I, I agree with Mr. Saldivar and Ms. Harris. Um, the four corners of the document on the MSA don't mention any of that, and uh, there would be a, a notice issue uh, as well for that kind of relief outside of the MSA. There's also no motion to set aside the MSA, so I don't think that there's a vehicle today right now to uh, present that relief or for the court to request it, so I'm going to deny any request for that order. Um, what else do you have, Ms. Dye? Well, that's it, Your Honor. Um, I think that there have been some things that have arisen, which is why I was requesting it, that I just learned of today regarding that, and so I think there has been some continued attempts at contact, so that's why I raised the issue, but I, I respect what the court is saying. That, okay. that was all. All right. Thank you. Anything further from anyone else? No, Your Honor. Anything that you want to add, Ms. Savage? No, Your Honor. Um, I do believe this agreement to be in the best interest of the children. The children are doing well with Ms. Delion. Um, they're with two older siblings. They're thriving, and this allows them um, to remain in a safe, stable home where they can have all their needs met. Um, and so I, I would ask the court to accept and terminate the parents' rights on the K grounds. Ms. Roden? Um, yeah, I also believe that syndicate's best interest it, uh, is the placement maintains family connection and sibling connection, as mentioned by Ms. Savage. Um, cost is really only concern um, originally was with the transfer of PMC, and I think everybody has exhausted efforts towards the possibility of licensing, and everybody fully understands that and discussed it. So I do believe this is the best interest of the children. Thank you. So I just want to make sure I understand, um, Ms. Kyler Green, how does the department wish to proceed in the near future as far as permanency? Uh, it's my understanding that the the department in Belong is push, is moving towards eventual adoption. Okay. I'm I am i am just I'm just asking because of the orders that I'm gonna make based on that MSA. I want to make sure that I understand all the uh, ramifications as they pertain to Miss De Leon. Uh, adopting so your honor and, and so i just wanted to add i don't believe that that is actually entirely accurate the agreement was that they would provide my client with all of the information um, my client had specific reasons as to why um, she wanted just to be named as the sole managing conservator and not move forward on adoption there was no agreement for adoption the agreement was um, that they would provide her with the information so she could best assess that situation but there is no um the benefits that would come with adoption she receives through different avenues regardless. And so um, it's more burdensome for her at this time to pursue the licensing based on work commitments and commitments with the children than it is um, for her to uh, just be named as the sole managing conservator. And we did discuss this at length. Let me see the MSA again, Ms. Brown Green, please. And then could you go to the next page, please? What I'm hearing, and I heard it from Ms. Roden, and I'm hearing it from Ms. Dodge's client. Um, I didn't, I don't, unless I missed it, I don't think I specifically heard it from anybody else, but um, is there anybody objects to number seven being satisfied and for the court to naming Ms. De Leon as a permanent managing conservator today? No, you're not. No, I clearly misspoke. No, okay. Well, I'm just, no, you're not. No, you're not. I don't think you misspoke as much as we just needed to kind of make sure we all were on the same page there because with the way the MSA was written, it was possible for it to go either way. But if everybody is clear today that all those efforts have been exhausted, I want to ask Ms. De Leon a couple of questions. Ms. De Leon, could you unmute, please? You understand that if I name you as a permanent managing conservator of the children today, we don't go the adoption route through the department and you don't go through all the checks and licensing and background that you're not going to have the same types of benefits and subsidies that you would have were we to do all that. You understand that, correct? Yes, sir. And you understand that if I name you the permanent managing conservator today of the two children, that you're not going to get those benefits, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you've had an opportunity to discuss that with your attorney and the parties? Yes, sir. You are clear that you can't come back and change it? Yes, sir. All right. Anybody else have any other questions for Ms. De Leon? 
No, Your Honor. Okay. Then based on the evidence and arguments of counsel, court finds that it has jurisdiction over this suit. Court finds that it has jurisdiction over the subject matter and the parties. Court finds that all parties entitled to citation and notice have either appeared or were duly cited and served throughout the course of these proceedings or have signed a waiver in their relinquishment. Court finds that this is the court of continuing exclusive jurisdiction. Court finds that no evidence for any other court having a continuing exclusive jurisdiction has been presented outside of the orders that were previously consolidated into this case. Court finds that the immediate settlement agreement of the parties is in the best interest of the children. The court has adopted the immediate settlement agreement of the parties. Court finds that the department has proved by clear and convincing evidence that pursuant to chapter 161.001 B1K, both parents have on or before the suit was filed executed voluntary affidavits of relinquishment of the children. Court finds that in addition to proving those up by clear and convincing evidence, that it is in the best interest of the children for the parental rights of Shannon de Leon and Aaron Davila to be terminated solely upon the 161.001 B1K ground of the Texas Family Code. Court finds that it is in the best interest of the children at this time and pursuant to the mediated settlement agreement of the parties to name Elaine de Leon, the intervener in this case, as the sole managing conservator of the children and to find that placement with her is in their best interests would be safe, appropriate, and meet all of their needs. The court will dismiss the de- de- Department of Family Protective Services and Belong as the temporary managing conservator, and the court will dismiss all the attorneys, including Miss Harris, Mr. Salivar, and Miss Savage, and Hill Country, excuse me, Tri County Casa, in their respective appointments for the parents and the children. Based on the MSA of the parties, the court makes a finding that is in the best interest of the children for there to be no child support ordered at this time pursuant to this cause. Um, and that all other orders not or all other relief not requested is hereby denied. Um, we would have had a permanency hearing, but uh, the date that Ms. Greenlee gave me, I think, is moot now because we are not named Ms. DeLeon as the permanent managing server. So there will be no further hearings. So is there anything I failed to address? We don't get it on the record now. We don't get it done now. It's never going to happen. Not for me, Judge. Uh, not for me, Your Honor. My, my client didn't just want the parties to know that if the children needed anything in the future, that he would he'd be there for them and to provide uh, anything they needed when to get out of jail. Definitely appreciate that. Nothing further. Okay. Well, then, thank you all for your time and your service and your work on this case. I appreciate everybody's effort and hard work to keep children together and to try and maintain this family as long as we could. And I'm pleased with this result, keeping the child with family. So thank you for all of that. There'll be no further hearings, and all parties are dismissed. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Court is streaming and holding this by Zoom and YouTube from Kendall County. Is there any objection? No objection. Objection, Judge. Having heard no objection, the court will go ahead and allow Ms. Kyler Green to begin the announcements. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Ms. Diaz? Uh, Permissive specialist for Belong. Kathleen Savage, attorney and guardian ad litem for the child, Your Honor. I'm ready. Rochelle Alcevedo for the mother, Vanessa Ruiz. She's not present, not ready, Your Honor. Carlos Pillado, permanency specialist with Belong. Mary Zorowski, foster parents. All right, and court will take uh, note that she did take the oath before she stated her name. Ms. Uruegas, would you please state your name for the record as well? Yes, Your Honor. This is Jennifer Uruegas, um, Permanency Supervisor for Belong. My apologies. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Acevedo has announced not ready due to her client not being present. We had actually commenced this trial back on December the 7th, and I allowed for the opportunity for 
<clears throat> not only mom to be present, but also for Miss Diaz and the department to review information to help them prepare more for final trial. Under those circumstances, I'm going to overrule the not ready and we're going to proceed with commencing and finalizing the trial today as far as we can go. So, Ms. Kyler Green, any housekeeping issues we need to take up at this time? Your Honor, from the department's perspective, it's my understanding that um, just Mr. McKeska was the attorney who commenced this trial. And so um, he's not present today. So for purposes of the testimony with Ms. Diaz, um, I, I will not be questioning her just in case there's any uh, concern or objection with that. Okay. Do you have any other evidence that you wanted to put on today? Uh, potentially, Your Honor, but I'll I'll have to wait and see how the uh, the rest of Ms. Diaz's testimony goes. I believe she was in the middle of cross examination by the mother's attorney when the when the trial stopped. That is correct. So, if there's no other housekeeping issues, then I will allow Ms. Acevedo to resume her questioning of Ms. Diaz. Thank you, Judge. Um, and Ms. Diaz, since our last hearing, did you have an opportunity to review the file? Yes. Okay. And again, how long have you been the caseworker on this case? I got the case back in September. Okay. Um, and since that time, have you had contact with mom? No. And uh, what contact information did you have for her? I have uh, an old phone number that was on file, a uh, phone number that was provided. Um, uh, from her attorney um, and that's the email also that she has those are the three primary contact information that I have for her and do you know whether those phone numbers are working uh, only one of the numbers is working when was the last time um, she contacted you from that number she has not returned any phone calls Okay, so how do you know it's working? That was the number that was provided to me that, that was a working number for her. Okay, so it's a working phone number. How do you know it's her number? I believe that's the number that, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was you that had sent that one to me. Okay, and she has not responded with that phone number? No. And have you? how many attempts have you made? I call her... Um, approximately it's twice a month that I call her and the email that you have when was the last time you attempted that I email her once a month to try and make an effort has she ever emailed you back from that email no how do you know that that's a, a good email for her specifically that is the last known email that she provided Okay. And who did she provide that to? The original caseworker to the department. Do you have an address for her? The last address that is on file is in Walde. And have you made attempts to go out there? Yes. When was your last attempt? Uh, my last attempt was in December. And who, was she present there? No. Was anyone present? No. Uh, did it appear that anyone was living there? No, not at all. Was it a, a vacant house? Yes, it is. Has she provided any other addresses for you? No. Do you know if there was any, if you noticed, was there any mail there? No, none that I could see. Um, do you have any contact with uh, her family members? No. All numbers that were provided to the original case uh, worker are non-working numbers. And what efforts have you made to locate her since you've had this case? I have attempted to call. I have called the, uh, the police department where she had been detained at and um, they were not able to provide me her address. I have called the uh, 
probations and parole office in San Antonio. I have left my contract information and no one has reached out to me. I have also called her criminal attorney from San Antonio and I have had no response. And she is, do you know she's out on bond? I believe she is, uh, yes, she is out on bond. Did you make any attempts to call the bond company? Uh, no, ma'am. Do you know she has a pretrial officer? No, ma'am. With regard to her service plan, have you... Uh, verified whether she's working in any, any of these services? She has not completed um, any services. When did you last uh, verify with any of these providers? Um, in December, we sent out um, for her to get um, uh, an evaluation, a psychological exam that has not been completed. There is an... Uh, an active warrant out for her. Okay. Um, just with, with regard to the psychological, who okay. set up that appointment? Uh, the department. And how would she have known about that date? Through email. All she has to do is just call the whole number that is provided to her and they will schedule the, the assessment. Okay, but you 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 can't tell this court whether that's a a working email or if she's got it if she received it. No, ma'am. Okay, and what date was the psych psychological set for? Um, it it actually expires uh, this month. It was sent last month, uh, mid month. Okay. Um, have you checked with the OSAR to verify whether she's done it or not? She has not completed it. No. When did you last check? In uh, late December. And has she gone to, do they just send you the results? How, how, do, how do you receive that? Uh, she has to communicate with them uh, and they set up an appointment to complete the assessment. It can be done um, virtually. And then whatever from there, whatever recommendations uh, from that assessment, um, then they, they whatever recommendation the recommendations I'm sorry that they um, suggest for her then we take it from there and getting her scheduled for those services. Okay, and so had she done it, you would have received the evaluation. Yes. Sir. Um, where was she supposed to take the parenting? Uh, the parenting classes are all online. And when did you last verify whether she's done those or not? In December. And how do you verify that? Uh, well, for, well, we go through the, the her having completed the, that assessment. She needs to complete the psychological assessment for them to do the 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 referrals for the whatever recommendations um, they feel that she needs. Okay, so then I'm a little confused. Was parenting on the service plan or not? Yes, from the previous uh, caseworker. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so parenting is required. Was there a, an act of 2054 for her? Yes. Okay, so then my question was, how do you check with the provider on whether she actually did it or not? Whatever agency it is that she was referred to, we go ahead and call them uh, to ensure that she is participating actively in those classes. Okay, so what provider was she referred to? I apologize, I don't have the name of the place in front of me. Are you sure she was referred somewhere? Yes, sir. How do you know that? Um, that inform like I said, that information is provided to her um, when we do those um, the the referrals. We go ahead and provide that. Do you know if that information was on her service plan? Yes, sir. Have you reviewed the service plan? Uh, yes. And you're confident that the name and, and uh, provider and their contact information was on there? It should be on there. Mm -hmm. 
Where did you send her for the counseling? Um, she, um, uh, with Dr. Yates. Is that 2054 still active? Yes, sir. And when did you last check with Dr. Yates um, on whether Ms. Ruiz was attending? Last month. She has not attended anything. Um, when was her last uh, attendance? You can give me just a second, please. I'm sorry. Attended March 30th and April the 5th of last year. Those were the only two sessions that she participated in. And in your tenure as the caseworker, you've kept all of these 2054s active? Uh, there have been other workers that have assisted me. Um, well, I, I learned my responsibility, my job responsibilities. Okay. But had she reached out, she was able to, to work these services? She has not reached out to anyone. Okay. Um, do you have any... Uh, verification whether she even has your information. I have provided to the number that was provided to me. I sent her my business card um, on that uh, text. Okay. And has she reached out to you in any way? No, ma'am. Um, do you know if she's reached out to any of the previous workers? Not to my knowledge. And when was her well, are visitations still set up? No, visitations were stopped. And has she attempted to contact you to try and, and restart those visits? No. Did you uh, in the last month verify whether, I know you indicated that she had an active warrant, but did you, did you verify whether she was in the Bear County Jail? Um, She was um, the previous caseworker. She, she was in um, in June. June to July. And ha have you checked the jail? I have called, yes. When did you call? Last month. Do you recall when? It was around, it was mid-month. And did you verify any other jails? Just from where the one that she had been released uh, that we had on the file from Bear County. I'll pass it. Ms. Savage. Yes. Um, Michael came to care after being born drug exposed. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and in reviewing the file, um, is it your understanding the mother admitted to methamphetamine use while she was pregnant with Michael? I believe so. From To the previous caseworker, not to myself, of course. Okay. Uh, and... Michael was also born uh, prematurely. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and due to his premature birth and exposure, he has suffered several medical um, delays. Correct. Okay. Uh, and Michael was removed straight from the hospital from his mother's care and placed into foster care. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, you stated that the mother has not had visitation with Michael in some time. Uh, do you have the last date of her visitation? The last time she saw Michael? That was in, uh, hold on. That was uh, on February the 24th. And <laughs> since February the 24th, um, to your knowledge, the mother has not reached out or made contact with the department or belong to set up any kind of, uh, or to see how Michael is doing. Is that correct? After that visit, uh, mother did call previous caseworkers um, on two occasions to ask how the child was doing. Okay, but she has not reached out to you since you've no. taken over the case. No, ma'am. Um, to your knowledge, did the mother ever submit to any drug testing? No, ma'am, she has not gone to any drug testing. To your knowledge, did the mother ever um, complete any drug treatment? No, ma'am. To your knowledge, has the mother received any information on Michael's medical needs? The previous caseworkers did make her aware of what Michael's uh, medical needs were. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, did she receive any specific training on how to meet his medical needs? 
Not to my knowledge. And uh, Michael was on oxygen at one point. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. As well as needing G tubes for feedings. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is a child with very significant medical needs. Is that correct? Correct. And throughout this case, the mother has not had any stable housing for herself or her son? Not to my knowledge. Okay. And to your knowledge, the mother has picked up um, criminal charges and been in and out of jail throughout this case. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so would you agree the mother has not addressed any of the issues that brought the child into care? No. Okay. And would you agree that it would be in Michael's best interest for the mother's rights to be terminated today? Definitely. Okay. Um, what is the goal for Michael um, and his future? Adoption by non uh, non relative non relative. I'm sorry. Okay. And specifically, his current placement is that correct? Yes, they have shown interest in, in adopting uh, Michael. Have you been able to uh, visit with the child and his placement? Yes. And have you seen that Michael is bonded to his placement? Yes. Yeah. And that placement has met all his medical needs, including getting him to all the several specialists that he sees. Definitely. Yes. Um, and do you believe that permanency goal of adoption by his current placement to be in his best interest? Yes, sir. I will pass the witness, Your Honor. Actually, a, follow uh, a few okay. follow-ups. Uh, Ms. Diaz, uh, you, were you aware that the department did make efforts to uh, look at family placement for Michael? Uh, yes, previous case workers did a ton. Okay, and that placement uh, was unable to occur because they did not feel like they could meet medi uh, Michael's medical needs. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, um, so Belong did make efforts, though, to try to place his child with family. Yes. Okay, I will pass the witness, Your Honor. Savage. Um, Your Honor, I can briefly call the foster mother, Miss Mary uh, Zarowski, I'm going to mess that up and just get information on how Michael's doing and his medical okay. needs. Mary, um, you have been placement for Michael, uh, for a significant period of time. When was he placed with you? He was placed January 27th, straight from the hospital. And during that time, um, Michael has had significant medical needs. Is that correct? Yes, he has. Um, can you name off some of the specialists that Michael has to see? Yes, he sees neurology, um, GI, um, ophthalmology, um, and pulmonology, okay. as well as developmental and a pediatrician. And um, can you tell the court some of Michael's medical diagnoses? Yes, um, he's diagnosed with cerebral palsy. He also has three um, rare genetic uh, mutations. Um, he did have respiratory insufficiency, but he has since gotten better from that. Um, and he's got a speech delay currently. Uh, and so in addition to seeing those specialists, he receives regular therapies as well? Yes, ma'am. And what therapies are those? He receives PT, OT, uh, speech therapy, and vision services. It was testified that the goal for Michael is adoption by um, yourself. Are you, is that still your goal in this case to adopt him? Yes, that is our family's goal. Okay. And having cared for Michael for almost the last year, um, do you believe that that would be in his best interest as well? Yes, ma'am. And during that time, um, has he grown and made developments in your home? Yes, ma'am, he did. We actually just did a reassessment for several of his therapies. Um, and he went from being below 1% to uh, above average in several things and above age level. So he's he's come a very, very long way. All right, Your Honor, I will pass this witness. Any other questions for Ms. Zorowski? Not for me, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Congrats, Ms. Savage. Yes, Your Honor. Why don't you want to give me your report now? Your Honor, um, Michael has been in this home for almost a year. He has very, very significant medical needs, uh, sees several different specialists to meet all of his medical diagnosis. Um, 
that placement is absolutely in his best interest. And I feel adoption is in his best interest as well. This mother hasn't seen her son since February 24th. Um, she hasn't made any efforts to address the issues that brought him into care. She doesn't have a stable place. We can't even locate her to have her participate in this trial. So I think it goes without saying that Michael is, is much better in this foster home where he can be adopted and he can have someone who can meet all the several needs that he has. Thank you, Ms. Savage. Ms. Acevedo, uh, or actually Ms. Carla Green, do you have any arguments to make? Uh, just briefly, Your Honor, the, the testimony of the of the caseworker in this case um, that was presented by the department shows that endangerment grounds have been met, Your Honor. Uh, the course of this case, it was established that the child was born um, as a result or with methamphetamine use in his, or with methamphetamine in his system. He was born early. He spent a significant time in the NICU. Um, he was in need of oxygen and has had significant um, medical issues as a result and in concurrence with his uh, being born uh, on methamphetamines. Um, the dangers of the home have been even difficult to assess beyond the fact that the home that's been provided um, is boarded up and um, it appears that no one is even living there. So the, the only home that we have um, in which this child would be associated with in regards to the mother um, is uninhabitable for all intents and purposes. Um, there's also been since uh, February um, when uh, the mother had uh, issues at the last visitation with the child where she um, was unable to stay awake while caring for the child. Uh, there has been no, uh, no visitation, no contact and um, an absolute abandonment of the child. Uh, the efforts by the department to communicate with her through looking for family members, um, calling jails, calling probation officers, um, attempting to make contact in any way, attempting to contact family members who might know where she is um, in an effort to return the child uh, with no contact and the inability that the mother has uh, demonstrated by much less failing, um, well, failing to remain in contact with the department, but much less um, being able to demonstrate that she can provide a safe, stable home for him. Um, proves the abandonment grounds. Um, in regard to the service plan, you heard testimony that um, services have been uh, ordered by this court, uh, none of which have been completed. Uh, it's it's very hard to, to track down a parent who doesn't want to be tracked down. Um, all the documents can be in place and the service providers can be contacted, but if a parent doesn't answer emails, doesn't have a working phone, um, it proves very difficult for the department um, beyond setting up those services and informing the parent. Um, it's impossible, uh, to, you know, for for any other efforts to be made uh, to provide for those services beyond just setting them up and hoping that the parent um, will maintain or have some sort of communication. Um, and also on P grounds, Your Honor, I believe it's been proven that the the mother admitted to um, use of a controlled substance that that endangered the health or, or safety of the child and failed to complete a sort a court ordered substance abuse program. Um, OSAR was ordered in this case, and as evidenced by the fact this child was born on methamphetamines, um, it's not a stretch that um, dr drug treatment would have been um, ordered as a result of that OSAR. And so also the testimony of the foster parent uh, shows that uh, this child's significant uh, medical needs and delays that have occurred as a result um, of, of the trauma of his birth, as well as the genetic disorders that he was born with, um, show that this mother is incapable or unwilling uh, to care for this child. And so it's within his best interest for her rights to be terminated. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want to recap. Were you going for D and E or just D? Uh, I, both, Your Honor. I, I think that um, I think that both would I think E in, in particular would be um, would be met in regards to the mother's conduct. All right. And then what about, uh, I think the other ones I heard were N, O, P, and R? Um, Your Honor, I didn't ask for R. I, I don't think that there was actually any evidence that the child was born addicted. Um, I don't think that um, throughout the course of this case, I, I think he was born with difficult, with, medical issues that were a result of methamphetamine use, but I, I don't know if addiction was actually um, ever proven or testified to. Well, I heard some testimony on it, but if you're not seeking it, I'm not going to say anything else about it. Um, okay. 
Miss Acevedo rebuttal. Um, I think the only thing I would rebut is is the pea ground. Um, she never did. I don't think that there was testimony that she made any admissions, Judge. Um, and she didn't do the OSAR. So I, I think the department's seeking it on. I think the words were we can assume that she, she it would be uh, ordered, but it, it it she never did. And it wasn't actually ordered, Judge. So I think that that's the only one. Um, that I would argue outside of that, Judge, I just need to put on my due diligence. Okay. Um, what what else would you like to say? Um, Judge, just as far as diligence, um, my client was in custody, I believe, the majority of the summer. I had a lot of contact with her criminal attorney, who was Forrest Good. Um, he represented her on the uh, felonies. Um, several attempts were made to have um, jail visits with her. Um, I had trouble actually setting them up. The one that was set up, they didn't bring her. Um, she was finally let out. I got in touch with her again through Mr. Good. Um, I think with regard to the, the timeline of uh, just in the last few months, she she did have a new number. That number was provided to the caseworker. That's the number that uh, she did respond. It was a working number. Um, and I think I previously put on the record, Judge, that, that I, I did make attempts to go to the Bear County Courthouse to actually meet her in person. Um, I was there on 11-2, and then we were reset for 12-1, which was right before our 12 setting, our 12-7 hearing. And I believe that that's the day that those warrants went out. She didn't appear. Um, and I'm sorry, Judge, I'm getting those. She was out of county court for and did not make an appearance. Um, I think primarily because she already had the felony warrants. And so now all of them are, are in warrant status. Um, I did on all of these occasions send out the uh, Zoom information. Um, reminding her of these court dates, both on our November setting, December setting, and today's setting. Um, because my last actual communication with her was that she wanted to be a part of this. She wanted to be at the trial. She wanted to testify. And so I made every effort to uh, make sure she had that opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Anything you want to rebut, Miss Carla Green, as the last bite? No, Your Honor. Based on the arguments, evidence of counsel, court finds that this court has continuing exclusive jurisdiction of this suit and jurisdiction over the subject matter and the parties. Court finds that there is no other court having continuing exclusive jurisdiction of this child and no other evidence has been presented. Court finds that the mother of this suit, Vanessa Ruiz, was served by personal, sir, excuse me, an appearance February 2nd, 2023, and was aware of these proceedings. Court has also made concessions to make it uh, uh, possible for the mother Miss Ruiz to appear here for trial, and Miss Ruiz has not taken advantage of those opportunities to be here. Um, court finds that the department has proved by clear and convincing evidence pursuant to Chapter 161.001B1D that the mother, Vanessa Ruiz, knowingly placed or knowingly allowed the child to remain in conditions or surroundings which endangered the physical or emotional well-being of the child. E, engaged in conduct or knowingly placed the child with persons who engaged in conduct which endangers the physical or emotional well-being of the child. N, constructively abandoned the child who has been in the permanent or temporary managing conservatorship of the Department of Family and Protective Services for not less than six months. And the department has made reasonable efforts to return the child to the parent. The parent is not regularly visited or maintains significant contact with the child. 
and the parent has demonstrated an inability to provide the child with a safe environment. And oh, the mother failed to comply with the provisions of a court order that specifically established the actions necessary for the parent to obtain the return of the child who has been in the permanent or temporary managing conservatorship of the Department of Family and Protective Services for not less than nine months as a result of the child's removal from the parent under Chapter 262 for the abuse and neglect of a child. Court finds that in addition to proving these grounds by clear and convincing evidence, it is in the best interest of the child to terminate Ms. Ruiz's rights to the child and find that's, that's in his best interest. Um, as far as the unknown father goes, court finds that the department has proved pursuant to chapter 161.002 B3 that the child was under one year of age at the time of the petition for termination of the parental child parent child relationship before adoption was filed and the father has not registered with the paternity registry under chapter 160 which is a ground for termination of the unknown father's rights so the court will terminate the father's rights under 161.002 B3 Court will find that the placement of the child with Ms. Zorowski is safe, appropriate, meeting Michael's needs and in his best interest to continue. Court will find that it is in the best interest of the child at this time to name belong with the Department of Family Protective Services as the permanent managing conservator. Court finds that the permanency goal in this case is non-relative adoption, and that's in the best interest of the child. Court finds that it is in the best interest of the child to dismiss Miss Acevedo from her appointment and representing the mother and find that she has fulfilled her duties and due diligence satisfactorily. Court will maintain Miss Savage in her appointment as the attorney ad litem. And the court will find that Belong made multiple reasonable efforts on multiple fronts with multiple agencies and persons to try and allow mom, Vanessa Ruiz, the opportunity to participate in this case. But as the evidence has shown here, she did not take advantage of any of those opportunities um, with the exception of a couple of phone calls to check on the child a long time ago. Our next hearing is gonna be a permanency hearing after final order. And that is going to be 3-7, March 7th, 2024 at 10.30. Ms. Ms. Kyler Green, would you please begin the announcements? Yes, good afternoon. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Mr. Santiago? Irving Santiago, uh, CPI investigator. Ashley Biederman, CPI investigator. Jimmy Dresden Mitchell, investigation supervisor. Irene Acosta, attorney for the mother. Richard Tolliver, attorney for the father. Mr. Rumsey, will you uh, unmute and announce, please? Matthew Rumsey, the father. Deborah Fuller, attorney ad litem for the child. Marcus McLemore, Hill Country Casa. All right. Um, both parents were served or no? Uh, Your Honor, I think they filed uh, waivers of service. And I'm sorry, I knew they were going to be present today, so I don't have that information present for you, but I can um, I can get it. All right, what are the terms and conditions of the agreement of the parties? Your Honor, with your permission, I'd like to share my screen. It's a pretty lengthy MSA, and I can just read it into the record. That would probably be best. Okay, so on, I'll just read it, Your Honor. Mediated settlement agreement on January 2nd, 2024. All parties listed below agree to the following. Number one, DFPS is appointed temporary managing conservator of two. Brandy Carroll and Matthew Rumsey are appointed temporary possessory conservators of the child. Number three, parents are granted weekly two-hour visits in Houston supervised by DFPS or their contractors subject to the parents being able to afford the travel expenses. Parents shall give 24-hour notice before each visit. Only parents shall be allowed into the visit. <laughs> Number four, no child support shall be paid by the parents at this time. Number five, DFPS shall do a preliminary assessment on Dottie Carroll and do a home study if appropriate. Belong agrees to do a preliminary within seven days of request for any future placement options provided by either parent or their attorneys and do a home study if appropriate. Number six, Belong shall move the child's placement closer to Bandera County if possible. Number seven, par parents shall be allowed to participate in medical appointments, medical training, therapies, whenever feasible in person or virtually, 
and receive copies of medical records when received by foster family, DFPS, or the parents. Number eight, DFPS shall provide and pay for and for the, for the parents to do the following sor- services and follow all recommendations. For number one, drug assessment. Number two, special needs parenting. Number three, individual counseling. Number four, a psychological. And number five, random drug testing. Additionally, the parent shall maintain one, stable housing and stable and appropriate housing, and two, a budget for taking care of the child. Number nine, DFPS and children's ad litem agree not to seek aggravated circumstances against the parents in this case. Number 10, all parties agree that the digital signature shall have the same effect as handwritten signatures. And the lower the signatures, Your Honor. Do you mind going back up to the top for me again? Thank you. Yes, sir. Ms. Acosta, is your understanding of the agreement? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Mr. Salvador? Uh, yes, Your Honor, it is. Ms. Fuller? Yes, Your Honor. Casa? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Ms. Sir. Carroll and Mr. Rumsey, I'm going to ask you questions at the same time. Did you both have the opportunity to discuss this agreement with your attorneys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you both have the opportunity to ask questions and make sure that you understood the agreement? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And did you enter into the agreement voluntarily? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you understand what's expected of you moving forward? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Were either of you forced in any way to agree to this? No, sir. No, sir. Were you made any promises or any given any guarantees or inducements to get you to agree to it? No, sir. No, sir. Are you both asking the court to adopt and approve your agreement today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Who was your investigator on this? Was it Ms. Peterman? I uh, the primary investigator was Mr. Santiago, Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Santiago. Okay. Mr. Santiago. You believe that this agreement is in the best interest of the children? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And is everything that's in your the affidavit that you filed with the court, to your knowledge, true and correct still? Yes, yes sir. All right. And you believe there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the children, of the child, excuse me? I do. And you believe that was caused by an act or failure to act of one of the persons entitled to possession? Yes, Your Honor. And for the child to remain in the home would have been contrary to his well, his welfare? Yes, sir. You believe that reasonable efforts were made to enable him to return home? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Peterman, if I ask you the same questions based on your affidavit, would your answers be the same? Yes, Your Honor. I believe this is in the best interest? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything you want to add as the ad litem, Ms. Fuller? Um. I just want to add that the child is is in a foster home. It, it is a distance away. We're hoping that you know once his uh, health concerns improve, that he can be moved closer. But he was hospitalized over the holidays for at least five days, and he had flu-like symptoms. And so, you know, he, that was a setback for him. But I think the foster home is is the, getting on top of meeting all his needs and getting all the assessments and the therapies that he needs, OT, PT, and speech. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, he'll start gaining weight and get back on track. And I just encourage the parents to engage in the services and um, be able to learn from this and, and learn, you know, the special needs of their son. Thank you, Ms. Fuller. Casa, Soats. We have, we have nothing to add. This is Barbara Oates, guardian ad litem. Sorry, I was a little late, Judge. We, we have nothing to add. Okay, thank you. Then, based on the agreement of the parties, the court will find that Ms. Carroll and Mr. Rumsey, in addition to being served through waivers of service, they have also appeared today and have agreed to the terms of the MSA and have entered a general appearance for those purposes. The court finds that there's sufficient evidence to satisfy a person of ordinary prudence and caution that there was a danger to the physical health or safety of the child, including a danger that the child would be a victim of trafficking, excuse me, strike that, 
health or safety of the child, which was caused by an act or failure to act of the person in child's possession, and for the child to remain in the home is contrary to the welfare of the child. The urgent need for protection required the immediate removal of the child and reasonable efforts consistent with the circumstances of providing for the safety of the child were made to eliminate or prevent the child's removal and reasonable efforts have been made to enable the child to return home. But there's a substantial risk of continuing danger if the child is returned home. Court will find that it's in the best interest of the child to name the Department of Family Protective Services as the temporary managing conservator and to name the parents as temporary possessory conservators pursuant to their agreement and in the best interest of the child. Court also finds that the child's placement at this time is safe and appropriate, meeting his needs and in his best interest to maintain, excuse me, to remain there. Court also finds that the agreement of the parties within the MSA as read into the record by Ms. Kyler Green shall constitute the order of the court for this hearing uh, I'm not going to restate it all because I want her reading of it into the record to stand other than the court will approve the uh, two hour visitations in Houston and won't order any child support or medical support at this time. We'll defer that um, court also understands that in addition to the specifics of the agreement that were read into the record that as part of this agreement department has agreed not to pursue aggravated circumstances in this case. Um, we'll be back for our status hearing February the 9th, 2024 at 930. It's February 9th, 2024 at 930. Child's placement is to remain the same. Uh, I want to ask both the parents. Do either of you have the funds available to hire an attorney? Um, no, sir. I don't. Okay. No, sir. I don't. Do either of you have anything you could sell or anything you could liquidate that would allow you to have the funds to hire an attorney? Um, no, not, not that I can think of at the moment. All right. Are either of you receiving any type of governmental assistance? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Do both of you work? I do not. Matthew does. All right. When you're done at the end of the month paying all your bills, Mr. Rumsey, do you have any money left over to hire an attorney? No, sir. Okay. For the purposes of this suit, I'll maintain an innocency finding for both parents and allow the continuation of Ms. Acosta and Mr. Saldivar's representation for the parents as indigent parents in this case. Um, again, the mediated settlement agreement, as stated, will constitute the court's temporary order. Anything else I feel to address besides the admonishment? No, Your Honor. All right, I have so to give you an admonishment. The state of Texas gives parents in CPS cases 12 months to demonstrate that you can provide a safe, stable, violence-free home for your child, drug-free home for your child. If you cannot do so, you can't demonstrate that you can do that within 12 months. Your rights to your children could be subject to further restriction, as they are now, or termination. I want to make sure you both understand the court gave you the opportunity to do a pre-262 mediation, which is me, what basically means today is a 262 hearing, and you got to mediate and come up with your own agreement before you came before me. That's getting things off to the right start, okay? It's getting off on the right foot. I encourage you to continue to do that and continue to work with the parties as we go through this and rely on your attorneys, CASA, your caseworker to help you navigate this, Okay. And yes, we're going to come back on February the 9th. And what I want to hear on February the 9th is that you're making progress. I don't want to hear on February the 9th that they haven't been able to get a hold of either one of you or you're not going to your appointments because that just means that we're going down the wrong road. And that's the more difficult road. And that's the road that's going to make reunification with your child take a lot longer. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Anything further from anyone else? No, Your Honor. Thank you. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Well, I appreciate all your time and your service. I appreciate y'all being able to work this out. And I look forward to coming back in February and seeing good things. Nothing further. All parties are excused. Thank you. Honor. I gave Thank you. them the information, Thank you. Your Honor, for participating. Um, I didn't know if anybody else was going to need to talk to them since it's uh, Ms. Kyler Green's motion. She can provide, they can provide an update on how the kids are doing, though. And that would be appreciated, Your Honor. I, I, I don't think that this motion is going to be hotly contested. So I don't know if there will be a need for... Um, 
anything beyond their just comments on how the kids are doing. County, Texas. Ms. Carla Green, would you please begin the announcements? Uh, any objection to the court proceeding from Kendall County via Zoom and YouTube? No objection. No, Your Honor. Okay. Go ahead with the announcements, Ms. Kyler Green. Thank you. Good afternoon. Emily Kyler Green, attorney for the department. Christy Cannot, permanency supervisor with Belong. Mona Powell, permanency specialist with Belong. Kathleen Savage, attorney for the respondent mother, Tracy Bushman. Um, Bushman, can you unmute and announce your name for the record? Tracy Bushman. Alana Pearsall, attorney for the father, Corey Martin, and he is not here. And Judge, I just double checked to make sure he hasn't responded to my last communication with him uh, this morning, and he has not. So I'm not ready since he's not here. Jennifer Harris, attorney on Brighton for the children. Joel Roden, Tri County Casa. All right, I was made aware. Uh, oh, I'm going to overrule Ms. Pearsall is not ready. Her client was served back in uh, well, a year ago and is aware of these proceedings and had the information to log in and chose not to. So we're gonna move forward. Um, I was aware of these or this issue last week, I guess. And my understanding is that the children were taken from the monitored return placement back to the prior foster placement. There was an issue with that, so we had a brief hearing on that issue, emergency hearing. Um, and then now I, I told the parties that were there, we need to have a full blown hearing with everyone before I make any further orders. Um, I just needed to deal, do, do something for the children at the time. So what all are we taking up today, Ms. Kyler Green? Just the motion to revoke the monitored return or is there something else going along with that? No, Your Honor, that that's it. The 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 order that that you made at the emergency hearing um, was successful in placing the child um, in into the prior home that the or excuse me the children back into their prior home, um, and so the only issue now is just the um, the fact that we're in a in a monitored return where the mother no longer has the ability to house the, herself or the children. Okay, and you're just asking to revoke the status of the monitored return and put the situation back into the status quo that existed prior to the court granting it? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. Responses before I hear any evidence? Um, Savage? Your Honor, well, my client obviously was not happy with this, the circumstances. Uh, right now, we understand there's not a, there's a housing situation, so we would just ask to come back hopefully within a month. Um, or six weeks, and hopefully there's an update. In the meantime, I would ask that visitation be ordered for Ms. Bushman. Um, there is a significant dif uh, distance between the placement and San Angelo. Um, so I would ask that if there is a meeting place that the courtesy worker near Ms. Bushman help transport her halfway, and then the worker for this case transport the children halfway, and that those visits occur at least two times a month for at least two hours, um, given the age, given the bond, given you know, we've got two infants. Um, and so that would be our request today for this hearing. And Your Honor, if I may respond to the visitation or if you'd like to go to the other parties first. Well, let's just, let's go ahead and keep it rolling. What's your response? I, I don't think we have any opposition to that. Um, that that request had already been um, sent to me and I've, I've talked to the belong workers and it seems like as long as there is a, a meeting point and the children aren't being transported the entire way that we don't have any opposition. What's the 50-50 meeting point? Anybody know? I think they were doing visits before injunction. Okay. All right. Um, let's go on to Ms. Pearsall. I have a very exciting position on this issue. What is that? I don't have a position. Oh, you said a very exciting non-position? Yes. Ah, uh, I missed the non. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were setting me up. I was waiting to hear how exciting it was. No, All right. You. Okay. Um, Ms. Harris? Your Honor, I am I support the department's motion. I have no problem with visitation occurring at a halfway point. I don't know that we need to come back in a month. 
um, because a lot has transpired. And even if Ms. Bushman has a place to live in a month, um, she's got a lot to do before um, we're looking at getting anything changed with the court. Okay. Well, then as it stands, uh, the only person that I need to hear from at this point is Ms. Rogan. Sorry, Your Honor, it took a second to come off mute. Um, no, we're in agreement with the um, department's motion. Um, we would just like to ask, since we're all here and it needs done, um, some of the virtual visitation we'd like to see limited. I think they've been 45 minutes to an hour, which is kind of hard on, you know, we have kids that are 12 months old. I think the virtual maybe would be better fitting for both their schedule and the foster parent schedule to be limited to about 20 minutes um, or so. That's really all their attention can kind of handle and keeping them now that they're walking, especially, I think, um, in front of a screen for 45 minutes has some challenges, um, but we would like to see those continue just be limited in time between the in-person visitation. We're in agreement with the in-person visitation. I think that's in their best interest if they could meet halfway. We would also just like to ask that because this is a kinship placement, I believe it's gonna need a home study. We would ask the court to expedite that so that they get both the support of a kinship worker and um, some subsidies or assistance uh, with the children. So if we could get an expedited home study on them to get them uh, those kinship fundings and kinship support, I think that would be beneficial, as well as some court-ordered daycare. I think they're supposed to start back to daycare next week. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rowan. I see where I had ordered, I guess this was back in the summertime, when Ms. Bushman had gone to the sober living transitional home. We were doing virtual twice a week for 30 minutes. And then I, at that point in time, the children were not mobile. So I think it was a lot of mom being able to just see the kids and talk to them. Um, now we're in a different place with their own growth and obviously the distance. So I understand the idea of that time being quality time. I I agree with Miss Roden. I don't know how we're going to keep um, twin one year old one year olds in front of a screen for forty five minutes. Uh, it sounds like um, trying to hold down some sort of wild animal. I've had kids, and I know how it gets when they're a year old. They're twenty minutes in, they're probably done. So what I want to do, because there's been so much contact, uh, I'm going to grant the motion, and I'm going to grant the. What request to split 50-50. Obviously, this is not the result that we all wanted at this point in time, but the fact of the matter is, is that these kids have been around Ms. Bushman a lot lately, and uh, not giving them that contact just out of the blue uh, is not good for them either. So I do support the halfway visits and uh, authorize you all to do the visits as you feel is appropriate for the circumstances. It sounds like Ms. Harris has some concerns about longevity. So uh, we need to just keep it in, keep it in check. How many hours are you thinking a week or every two weeks on that halfway visitation? Your Honor, I'm not even sure that, that every week or every two weeks is appropriate. It's, I think we were doing once a month because it's quite a drive. Okay. For everybody involved. All right. Then this is what I want to do. Um, let's do 20 minutes virtually, a minimum of twice a week. And then we'll do, to start out, we'll do the meeting halfway 50 50 visitation injunction to start out once a month while Miss Bushman gets back on her feet and figures out what she needs to do. And um, I, I agree, I don't want the kids on the road any more than they need to be on the road. You know, I've done a lot of driving out there. I'm very familiar with what it all looks like. So um, that'll be the order there. Your Your Honor, I'm, I would also ask that Miss um, Bushman be sent, based upon the allegations, based upon the change in circumstances, that she be sent for a, a nail test or a hair test at the very least and then drug testing start once a week. I think considering where we are, um, our dismissal date is May. 
I think it's good for everybody to have a, a barometer on what's happening to know where we stand. So I'll, I'll grant that. I think it's appropriate. It's not far outside of what she would have had to do staying there in the facility to comply. So I'll grant that. Your Honor, the, the once a month visits injunction, are those for two hours? How far are the kids coming from Junction? It's about an hour and a half from San Antonio to Junction, Your Honor. I, I'd still ask that if we're they're They're going from being with their mother all the time to not seeing her. I still don't think two times a month meeting at halfway point for two hours is unreasonable. I, I don't either. Um, I, I don't think it's unreasonable either. I, I can understand some of the concerns, but I'm just really trying to think about what they're, what's going through their minds um, and, and the confusion they have. So if we can lessen that at all, let's do it twice a month and let's do it for two hours. And then we'll do the virtual twice a week for a, a maximum of 20 minutes. And if if you're 10 minutes in, Ms. Bushman, and you can tell that they're not interested in the call anymore, let's cut it off. You know, I mean, yeah, you can get your 20 minutes, but we want that to be a quality 20 minutes. And so um, I'm going to allot you that time, but I want to see what kind of discretion you have to say, OK, this is not this is not working anymore. And we need to end this call. All right. I want to see where, where you stand with that. So, all right. What else do we need to take up? Anything, Ms. Carla Green? Uh, Your Honor, just clarification on whether or not you ordered the expedited home study on placement and the daycare. I did. Thank you. And Your Honor, I, I just, oh, oh, we've had a meeting and we've gone over this um, and, and Ms. Bushman listened to all of us, but I'm still not sure she understands the situation that she is in. She has a long history of drug use. She has a long history of having her children removed from her. She did a 30 day drug rehab. She's been asked to leave two of them now. She does not have a place to live. She does not have a job. She does not have any money saved. She did not have a plan for that when she was gonna move out with the children. She, she is, other than being clean at this point, she's not a lot further than she was at the beginning of this case. She got very, very lucky, I believe, being able to have a monitored return so soon in this case. So I just, I wanna make it very clear um, because I, I, I'm not sure that was made clear at the meeting that she's got a lot of work to do for her to even be considered to be reunified with her kids. Well, I think that you said it very well. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't disagree. My, my main concern right now is making sure that the children that were just with her have some sort of access so that there's not just a complete and total upheaval in their minds right now as to where, where did this lady go that we were just with for a while. But I think Ms. Bushman, you, you do need to understand this is quite a setback for you personally in your case. It's a big setback. And I agree with Ms. Harris. There's a lot of work to do and not a whole lot of time to do it. Dismissal dates in May. So you got four months to figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. So um, I don't want to get into that too much today because it's not really what's in front of us. Um, court has granted the motion to revoke the monitored return and ruled on the visitation and the expedited home study and daycare assistance and I think that that probably wraps it up for today, unless somebody else has something pressing that I haven't talked about yet. No? Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you all for your time and your service, Ms. Bushman. Good luck to you. And uh, if nothing further, we'll see you all back on February the 20th at 1130 for the permanency review. February 11th, sorry, the 20th, excuse me, 2024 at 1130.